Morning, everybody. I have a machine here that I built new in 2006. It wasn't very high end at the time, but it was built with a purpose, which was essentially starting to digitize a scrapbook for my parents. So it did a great job with video capture, analog video capture, and storing JPEG photos, things like that at the time. However, the project kind of went on hold for quite a while, and the machine sat in storage up until last year. It's 2022 right now, so that would have been 2021. It did fire right up and boot into Windows XP last year. However, this year, no life at all. So again, it wasn't built with especially good components and I think the power supply has probably just failed, capacitor or something like that. So I do have a small form factor PSU here just to plug in and try out, but I wanna see if I can get this thing running today. Oh yeah. So it's a Diablo Tech power supply. It does have a single rail, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, not a high quality unit. I'm actually kind of impressed. It has a six plus two pin PCIe connector and an eight pin PC, uh, sorry, um, processor connector. But I remember this motherboard uh, being a bundle deal at Micro Center with a Celeron dual core processor for like 65 or $70 back in the day. So I built a few of these, and the boards, honestly, I think this is an ECS Elite Group motherboard. They used to be a huge manufacturer of low-end boards. Um, but I've never really had a problem with one of these. Looks like it's a 945GCT-M. It does have a NVIDIA Quadro NVS uh, PCI Express card, and then it also has a really actually rare um, PCI dual head card too. So the uh, top one can do two monitors and the bottom one can do four. So this machine can actually um, run up to six 1600 by 1200 displays without using the IGP. <clears throat> no frills, but anyway, uh, I unhooked the four pin processor power and the 24 pin. So I'm just gonna hook in the little Antec PSU and see if it'll just fire up into BIOS. Um, after that, if that works, I will start hooking up all the peripherals. Although I'm realizing, I don't think this Antec unit has, I don't think it has SATA power. So I might not be able to power all the hard drives. Looks like the, oh man, I didn't think about that. Well, either way, let's see if it boots into BIOS. Worst case, I can run and get a cheap power supply. Well, fans are on. I do not have a display signal at least yet. But that's a start. I hear like little chirps. Oh, so it just shut off. I'll turn back on. Maybe the BIOS is resetting. I'll give it a minute and see if it comes online on its own. All right, so I pulled out both. Oh, well, look at that. It's okay on integrated graphics. It's good, at least the motherboard and CPU are okay. Um, I'm gonna put just the PCIe graphics back in. Maybe that was just too much juice out of the PCI slot to run this really cool dual head quadro card. Let's try that. So it won't post with the Quadro. I guess I'll try with the PCI graphics version. Well, it's not power cycling anymore, but it's also not posting with the PCI graphics. So I guess, let me try to boot it with just the 945 chipset graphics accelerator and see if I can get the main hard drive hooked into power too somehow. I think I've got an adapter. I do not have an adapter, but oh my God, this thing weighs nothing. I have to open this up. This is so bad. 2012, wow, I put this PSU in later. Interesting. Well, honestly, I've seen worse. That doesn't look quite as offensive inside as I was anticipating, but I would not give this a 500 watt rating. Not for a second. <laughs> 
fuse is good and everything looks okay. Um, not sure what failed, but these are clearly not very high end components. Low noise, long life fan. You can tell this has not had a lot of power on hours. That fan's really clean. Junk. Uh, however, yeah, I don't have an adapter for SATA uh, hard drive power, so I'm gonna have to go get a PSU. Well, I raided a different older PC at my home and I found this TR2 430. Uh, it has a pretty strong 5 volt rail, so it tells me that it's a pretty old power supply, but has all the connectors that we would possibly need. So I'm going to throw it in there and let's hope for the best. All right. So it looks like the same issue with the Quadro, which is really strange. We must have had a power surge. Oh, nope. We're good. All right, let me shut it back down, plug in the hard drives and see if we can get it to boot. It actually fired up with both Quadros and that's a good sign. So yeah, I guess it was just the power supply. But that just goes to show you, you need a really strong 5 volt rail for these older systems because PCI cards lean on 5 volts really, really hard. So, yeah, nice. Free fix for me. There we go. Junk CPU. I should really bring in one of my Xeons, but yeah, man, back at it.